guys, Michaela is going to be our nurse today as we do the abdominal exam. Before she came in, she washed her hands and she's already introduced herself to me. So first, she's going to be um, doing an inspection. Can you pull this out? So first, she's going to inspect the area looking for skin lesions or any obvious abnormalities. And then she's going to use a light, looking um, for a tangential light. Sometimes if somebody has an aortic aneurysm, there would be a pulsatile mass in this area. She doesn't see any abnormalities. We're gonna go a little out of order for the abdominal exam and do an auscultation first, because if we palpate, it's going to increase bowel sounds. So she's going to start in the left lower quadrant here using the diaphragm of the stethoscope and she's going to listen for about 30 seconds in one location um, and then she's just going to assess that there are bowel sounds in all the locations. Anything from 5 to 25 per minute would be considered normal. If you are listening for an extended period of time, just tell your patient I'm listening for bowel sounds and to assess it fully, I'm gonna listen in some areas longer than others, but it doesn't mean that there's a problem. Next, she's going to um, percuss the same regions, just as the we did with the lung sounds. She's going to have the same technique here, and she's li listening for resonance to make sure that there's no um, masses or constipation stools in the area. After that, She's going to palpate. So she's just gonna do some soft palpation in all four quadrants, assessing for any abnormalities or any tenderness. And then after that, she can do deep palpation, assessing for the liver, the kidneys, and the spleen. The liver, if it was um, inflamed, would be right under the right um, uh, diaphragm region right here and she would kind of curl her fingers under the rib right there and be able to assess if there's any inflammation. To assess for spleen inflammation, it's more over on this area, again, curling the fingers under. If you are concerned that the patient has mono, um, do not touch the spleen as if it ruptures, this would be a problem. Typically, the provider's gonna be doing deep palpation and then kidneys are gonna be right between where the hip and the bottom of the rib is in this area. And you can push down feeling for that, but I've only ever actually felt it one time and it was in somebody that was extremely thin. So that is going to be our palpation. Next, we're gonna talk about our special maneuvers, including Murphy's sign or inspiratory arrest. This assesses for the gallbladder inflammation. So to perform this, the nurse is going to place her um, fingers right here under that right rib. And then she's gonna ask the patient to take a deep breath in and as they exhale, that she's going to push down and up. <sighs> uh. When the patient has expiratory arrest like that and that stops them from completing the breath, that is a positive sign. Simply palpating in this area and having tenderness is not necessarily a positive Murphy sign. Next, she's going to do rebound tenderness, which assesses for the appendix being inflamed. To do rebound tenderness, she's going to push down on the right, or I'm sorry, on the left hand side, even though the appendix is on the right. Go ahead and push down. And then that doesn't hurt too much, but what we're going to focus on is let go real quick. If it was positive, that would cause pain. The um, psoas muscle runs right below, or right, I'm sorry, right above the appendix region. So the iliopsoas sign is where the patient would lift their leg and the nurse would push down on the leg, contracting the psoas muscle. If there was appendicitis, this would elicit pain. The other way to perform the iliopsoas maneuver is to have the patient lay on their left hand side and then the nurse would extend the right leg back. If this was painful, again, this would be a positive sign. Lastly, we're gonna do CVA tenderness. So I'm going to sit up and the nurse is going to literally hit over where the kidneys would be. Don't be too soft with it 
because otherwise you won't get a good assessment. <laughs> you don't have to do that last little part, but just big whack on each side there. And if there is inflammation of the kidney from either a kidney stone or nephro, um, uh, lithiasis, that would be painful or if there was a kidney infection. So those are the special maneuvers. Let me make sure I didn't miss any. We got them all. And that is how you do an abdominal assessment. Thanks.